Jumping into the number five spot of the top five best budget gaming mechanical keyboards for beginners is the Keychron C3 Pro, coming in at a price tag of $46.99. If you wanna check out any of the five keyboards in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. But let's talk about the Keychron C3 Pro. Now, there's actually two variants, one that's hot swappable and one that's not hot swappable that only has a red LED RGBs, and that one comes in at $10 cheaper. But let's talk about it. This is a TKL or a 10 key less form factor. This refers to the size of the form factor when compared to a full size keyboard because it literally has 10 keys less than a full size keyboard. TKLs are a great form factor if you're not sure if you're gonna miss the functionality when going to smaller keyboard form factors, but don't quite take up as monstrous amount of space as a full size keyboard, which I pretty much never recommend any beginner to buy a full size keyboard. It's just too big for most people's desks, as well as just widening your hands during game play because your mouse has to go somewhere and the WASD keys are all the way on the left. But let's talk switches. If you don't understand keyboards, this video will make you pretty much understand how mechanical keyboards work by the end of it. Switches are what really create the personality of a mechanical keyboard. There are three main types of switches here, linear, tactile, and clicky. Linear means there is not a bump along the press down or back up. Simply, they press down till the switch bottoms out and come right back up with a very consistent feel. This is the best style of switch for gaming. It allows for more precision and less fatigue while especially pressing the W, A, S, and D keys over and over, and sometimes not quite actually pressing them all the way down depending on how we're playing. Tactiles excel with typing quickly as they add resistance to the middle of the downstroke and the same with the upstroke. There is a bump with increased weight until the switch pushes past that bump and it bottoms out. Typing quickly is typically more accurate with these types of switches because accidental key presses are not as easy to do. Now, clicky switches are essentially like tactiles, but with a click with them. Now, I really don't recommend these switches, clicky switches, to any of you. While it sounds fun, it gets annoying after just a few days of use, and it's also extremely loud. And in the keyboard community, no one really even considers clicky switches. We really only consider linears and tactiles. So genuinely, you're probably not gonna love having these switches for a long amount of times like you will for tactiles and linears. However, to wrap it up, if you're gaming, use linears. Especially if you're a beginner and don't know what you want, definitely pick linears, the Keychron C3 does have red linear switches. Now, how are these switches on the C3 Pro? Well, they're decent. Typically, the more higher end a switch, the smoother it is, especially with linears. And while these are fairly low end switches, as the price point dictates, it actually feels surprisingly good for typing and gaming. Also sounds pretty dang decent as well. Don't take my word for it though, take a listen to the sound test. and that is how it sounds. However, if you wanna modify your board in the future, you can actually change out your switches. This is what's called hot swappability. Now let's explain. This keyboard, the Keychron C3 Pro, is hot swappable. But what does that mean? Well, if a keyboard is not hot swappable, it typically means the switches are literally soldered onto the PCB, or printed circuit board, the brains of the keyboard essentially. And this means you cannot easily replace one or all of the switches without literally unsoldering and resoldering on new switches. However, this is typically less expensive to manufacture, so you can get some pretty good deals sometimes on keyboards words that are soldered, but you have to love how it is from factory. Hot swappability essentially adds a pop-in, pop-out connector system that allows you to pretty easily take out switches and replace them with either three or five pin switches, which literally just refers to the amount of pins that all look different, it's a little confusing, on the bottom of the switch. But we don't have to get too far into that. This makes it super fast and easy to change out switches for either personal preference, keyboard modding, or to replace a broken switch. This also allows you to grow with your keyboard since if you thought you liked linears but you actually like tactiles, a year, two years, or even six months down the road, you could just pop new switches in there and customize it to your preference. So the C3 Pro for this price point has full hot swap ability. So even though it's a very budget keyboard, you can grow with this keyboard and genuinely keep it for a few years and if you get more into keyboard modding, you can make this thing sound like a full custom. Now let's talk stabilizers. Stabilizers are metal bars that quite literally stabilize the longer keys such as the spacebar, enter, backspace, and other longer keys. However, these need to be tuned. If they're not tuned and lubed well, then they will start ticking, rattling, 
and not only do they sound bad, but they will feel bad. If they're not lubed and tuned with precision, they can sound like this. These are bad stabilizers. Take a listen. At this price point, it's not typical to get well-tuned stabilizers, and Keychron did a great job here. Take a listen. You hear the difference between those? Okay. Now continuing on with the C3 Pro's features, this is also gasket mounted, which means it's literally suspended and actually moves up and down slightly when typing. This makes for a softer typing experience and it's typically only on higher end keyboards. So it's quite impressive for it to be on this one. It also can make it a lot easier to mod it in the future, which is one of the reasons I love this keyboard. Now, as well as if you're a big gamer, this has RGB. It can be fun to play with as this is per key lighting. So you can change literally the individual color on each key and they're shine through keycaps, which means you actually have that backlight. So at night you can see which keys are illuminated. So that's nice. And one last thing to mention, this is really only if you're deep into the keyboards is this has QMK via support, which means you can fully modify what every key does and it's just something that allows you to grow with your keyboard, which is another reason this is one of the best, cheapest keyboards you can just get in as a beginner, you'll be happy with, but you can also grow with it. Now that you understand a lot of the basics, let's move on to the number four spot. And this is the Ala F99, coming in at a price tag of $70.54 at the time of filming. This is the most expensive keyboard on the list, so if you want something better but still cheaper, just keep watching. Now we have went over TKLs or 10 key less form factors, but there's a lot more than just TKLs such as 60%, 65%, 75, 1800, TKL, and then full size. These are the main form factors, but there's actually like hundreds of different form factors. Now this keyboard is the slightly rare 1800 form factor. This essentially takes a TKL and a full size and combines them. So it takes the number pad from a full size, but puts it in essentially a 10 key less size, which is actually really nice and what I prefer. Now the absolute biggest pro of this keyboard is the amazing lubed linear switches and stabilizers. This truly has enthusiast level switch feel, sound, and fantastically tuned stabilizers. Of all the keyboards on the list, this is the most expensive, which is why it's in the number four spot. As for beginners, this might be a little bit too much. However, this is by far the best sounding and feeling keyboard for both typing and gaming, so it also makes sense. It's a good value if you already know that you want something like this. But don't take my word for it, take a listen to the sound test. And that is how it sounds pretty dang good. And it feels even better to type on. Now, while many of you beginners might not wanna spend this much money on one of your first keyboards, as you probably might not know what you want yet, that's totally fine. And even though you probably don't want to, if you get this keyboard, this is fully hot swappable. So you can swap in any switch that you want in the future, even though you shouldn't because these switches are dang good. All right, but let's talk connectivity. There's three main ways that keyboards can be connected. A wired non-detachable cable, a detachable USB cable, which is typically USB type C, and then wireless. Now, a detachable USB type C is always better than a hardwired non-detachable board as it allows you to not only personalize the colors and style of your cable, but if your cable ever breaks, it's easy and cheap to replace. That cannot be said for the non-detachable wires, like the Keychron C3 Pro, fully detachable USB type C, which is exactly what you want. As for wireless, obviously they're more expensive and like this board has, there are two methods inside of this, either Bluetooth or a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle. Now for gaming, you don't wanna use Bluetooth. That's because the refresh rate on Bluetooth is significantly less than on a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle, which is using radio frequencies at a higher refresh rate. This basically means how many times per second that keystroke will be registered possibly in your PC or your computer, so it's way faster. Basically, 2.4 gigahertz USB dongles 
is the only way you're gonna wanna game with your keyboard and use Bluetooth to write essays, things like that. So again, if you wanna game wirelessly, have the dongle. Otherwise, just use a wire connection with USB Type-C. Now, for the Aula F99, this can also just be plugged in with a USB Type-C if you want, rather than using wireless connectivity, but it's there if you wanna use it. Overall, if you already know you want the best, smoothest, linear switch field, this is a hard keyboard to beat, but it can definitely be pricey for some beginners. But with that, let's move on to the number three spot, and this is the Akko ACR Pro 68. This comes in at a price tag of $66.99 at the time of filming and the biggest benefit of this board is that it's an ACO board. Let me explain. ACO makes mid to entry level enthusiast keycaps and switches as well as pre-built keyboards. The benefit of this is that the keycaps here are extremely high quality and the switches follow suit. This is because they sell these keycaps and switches on their own for people that just wanna buy and customize their keyboards. And typically when keyboards in this price range do this, they cheap out on the case or the board itself because they spend all of their money on the switches and the keycaps. But because ACO makes all of the keycaps and switches in the house and sells them separately, the value proposition here is significantly higher because they can sell a pre-built for much less than like another company would be, let's say if they're getting a different brand switches and putting them in their keyboards. So basically you're getting high-end components and a high-end board for a lot less money than pretty much everyone else. It's just that if you want Akko stuff or not. The colorways are also awesome and much more similar to a full custom keyboard. To build on that, these boards actually come with accent color keycaps. So if you want it to be a stealthy build, you can, but if you want some cool colorways mixed in, well, you just add on those accented color keys. Now this keyboard comes with two switch options, either the golden yellows or the crystal switches. Now I got mine with the golden yellows because I already had a few keyboards with the crystal switches and I wanted to try them out, but I would prefer overall the crystal switches, especially for gaming. These are definitely more of an enthusiast entry level switch and is definitely a huge step up from something like Keychron switch although not quite on the level of the Aula F99. If at some point in the future though, you do wanna switch these out, well, it's fully hot swappable. Stabilizers here are also very, very good. The case quality here is also great with a two-piece acrylic design with gold hexagon screws in the bottom, which is extremely expensive feeling and quite heavy overall. This does feel like a pretty high-end keyboard. But let's take a listen to the sound test. And that is how it sounds. Now to further push that more custom keyboard feeling, this actually comes with a fairly low end coiled cable, but still a coiled cable where none of the other keyboards on the list come with that. So that's kind of cool to further push that value and artisticness of a keyboard. Now the other extremely cool thing for you gamers is the RGB. Not only does this have per key backlighting on each of the keys, but this also has 360 degree lighting and because it's an acrylic smoked out but clear case still, it looks absolutely insane at night. It glows on your desk, the keyboard looks crazy. It's very, very much a more high-end feel. And for this price tag, a few years ago, you could never get something this good for this price. So yeah, it's a very good value. If you wanna spend the money, there are still cheaper keyboards on the list. Now, the only con is that at this price point, because they give you all of those other components, you don't get any wireless connectivity. So you still will have to use a detachable USB Type-C, but well, those are the decisions, decisions, decisions. However, if this is still a little bit too expensive for you as a beginner, the next two keyboards are definitely ones to look at. So with that, let's move on to the number two spot, which is the Daru EK75 Pro coming in at a price tag of $59.99. For the price here, while it's not as polished as the Akko keyboard, the typing and gaming experience is pretty unbelievable for a price that's under 60 bucks. These linear switches are awesome and the stabilizers are extremely well tuned here. This produces more of a creamy, thock sound that is just plain satisfying. If you're really big into that style of sound, which I typically find that a lot of people getting into mechanical keyboards really are looking for that sound profile, well, I think you're gonna love it. I definitely do, but don't take my word for it. Take a listen to the sound test.
yeah, that sounds damn good. However, if you want to mod your keyboard in the future, this is still fully hot swappable with three and five pin switches, so you can swap in any switch you want in the future. Now the case here definitely isn't on the level of the Echo board, but we do get wireless connectivity and a USB dongle. So if you want to game wirelessly, you can, that's under 60 bucks. Now that gives you a lot more features and value. While the case is still very durable, it just doesn't have the build quality of the more premium keyboards and it's a little bit more of a generic feeling. That being said, this does have a knob in the right hand corner. So for changing volume on the fly, it's super nice. And that is kind of a more premium touch. But if you thought you were gonna lose RGB at this price point, you are wrong. You still get RGB and pretty cool RGB at that. Not only do you get per key RGB lighting, but you also get some static lighting in the upper corners that goes a little bit on the back and on the side. So it kind of glows on your desk. That is a nice touch. But with that, let's move on to the number one best budget mechanical keyboard for beginners. The one that I always recommend to anyone who's trying to get into gaming mechanical keyboards. This is the Techware Phantom Plus coming in at a price tag of only $55.99. That is a great price. This brings it with value, giving you truly not only the most refined board we have ever tested at this price point, but also a ton of fantastic features you'll definitely want for gaming. Firstly is the build quality. It is extraordinary here. This uses an expensive, exposed, thick metallic metal plate on the top with then a thick plastic case in a TKL form factor, which is pretty much perfect for beginners. Like I said, TKL is the best thing that you can't really go wrong with. The switches here are also made in-house by Techware themselves with a choice between two different linear switches, which are either pinks or reds. Reds being a little bit lighter and pinks being a little bit heavier but I do recommend the pinks because they are very good. Those switches produce a very, very, very sexy sound profile. It's very thocky and I just love it. It's very satisfying to type in game on. Not only this, but they're pre-lubed switches. And while I didn't go over that, it basically means these are lubed, like the internals of the switches are lubed, which makes for an even smoother experience. Very, very smooth and satisfying. Stabilizers here are also extremely well-tuned and have this like, very enjoyable feeling for gaming specifically. These stabilizers don't feel like quite any other stabilizers that I've used, and while they're not the best and greatest in the world, they're pretty dang good. They also have a really good sound profile, but don't take my word for it, take a listen to the sound test. And that is how it sounds. Now, this is wired with a detachable USB Type-C, so this doesn't have any wireless connectivity. So if you want a wireless board, Techware does make a version of this keyboard that is wireless, but it's kind of more closer to that $80 price point and maybe not quite as good for a beginner because of the price point. It's a great keyboard, but you know, you don't know what you want yet. That'll also be an option on the Amazon links below, so you can check that out if you want. Just click the links below for the Techware Phantom Plus. Now, let's talk RGB because they did a great job here. Now, while it doesn't have any crazy like side edge lighting, this does have shine through keycaps, which I know a lot of beginners in the mechanical keyboard gaming segment definitely really like. And the biggest thing is that while all of these keyboards have had RGB, not all RGB is created equal. And this one is the brightest on the list. This is actually one of the brightest keyboards that we've tested. The colors and the customizability with all of the different static colors are enormous. So you can really customize this to your setup or just your preference. But not only that, but the vibrancy of each of the colors, the reds, the pinks, the teal colors, those just look great. Continuing on with that value, this is also hot swappable, only with three pin switches, but that's just an option that you need to choose when choosing your switches when buying them to upgrade your keyboard. But yeah, it's super easy to still upgrade this keyboard. Small price to pay for value here. But overall, this is my most recommended gaming mechanical keyboard for any beginner. Basically, anyone's gonna be happy with this keyboard. But again, if you wanna check out any of the five keyboards in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. This is a totally new style for me going through kind of teaching as well as well giving my top five recommendations, but at the same time trying to educate you guys, especially beginners. Hopefully this is very helpful to kind of get all of your basic information 
all there, but also give you real recommendations. Guys, let me know if you like these series and should I do more of these for like mice, mouse pads, and other things like that, headsets as well. And let me know if you like the new set. It's not quite done. We're gonna do some stuff on the wall over here, but let me know. We've been working hard on doing this set and making it awesome. So hopefully you guys enjoy. It's not quite done, but let me know in the comments below what you think of it. This is a Consumer Deck Review and I'll see you guys in the next video.